the snake in the grass, a deadly foe. But why does this image send a shiver of fear down our spines? In shape and movement, they are so different from us that legend and folklore have given them a sinister reputation they don't really deserve. How can we understand an animal that smells with its tongue? Or that hears with its whole body, sensing vibrations? The hypnotic stare of its unblinking eye can seem as alien as its apparent rebirth through the shedding of its skin, sloughed off like a scaly ghost of itself. Among them are giants that storybooks say are a hundred feet long and ready to strangle unwary jungle explorers. And yet, there is this little guy, a thread snake, very friendly and not deadly at all. There is even beauty and grace in some as they go upon their bellies, silently through the trees. But where did snakes come from? An animal that looked much like some other reptiles alive today. It's hard to believe that snakes have anything in common with creatures like this. But in fact, every reptile descended from the same ancestor. This primitive ancestor led to two groups of animals, turtles and all other reptiles. All through the age of the dinosaurs and during the emergence of lizards, snakes were nowhere to be seen. But there were legless lizards, and it was from these that snakes evolved. For 110 million years, they have been living side by side with other reptiles. Today, there are more than two and a half thousand different species of snake. Hidden within their bodies, vestiges remain of the legs they lost. But snakes, with a skull, backbone, and a multitude of ribs, are able to move quickly in several ways. The serpentine crawl of the cobra. Most snakes move like this. The movement creates little ridges in the ground, which the snake pushes against to propel itself forward. When you're short and fat like this puff adder, throwing cobra-style loops is impossible. Instead, the muscles act on the ribs. As the ribs move, the snake's scales grab hold of the ground, and with a series of rhythmical contractions, the snake rows along in the sand. The famous sidewinder favors the serpentine wave, and like the cobra, it can push itself against the ridges it nudges up in the sand. By moving sideways, it needs only two points of contact on the very hot sand. At any one time, most of its body is held in the air. Legs? Who needs them? There are different problems for a tree-climbing python in a rainforest. To reach across a gap, it can stiffen sections of its body becoming its own ladder from branch to branch. This sinuous and flattened body, with its broad tail working like an oar, could be mistaken for an eel. But this is no fish. It's a sea snake. Most snakes can swim. Though even the sea snake must interrupt its hunting now and then for a breath of air at the surface.
As hunters, in water or on land, snakes are silent and efficient killers. A rattlesnake has more than its bite to work with. Its tongue constantly tastes the air, scenting for prey. Its body senses ground vibrations, even the footsteps of a mouse. Standing still is no defense. The rattler is also able to sense body heat. Infrared heat, detected by sensory pits on each side of the face, pinpoints the prey. Their high-tech weaponry has been around long before ours. But in any combat situation, defense is as important as attack. This military training ground is home to two other opponents. The rare red cockaded woodpecker lives in this loblolly pine. Its enemy is a corn snake. In the battle against rats, each snake in a paddy field is worth far more than those that are sold to be eaten. The snakes in our world can be partners in our survival. We're learning more about them all the time. But there's always a new twist. Well, sometimes when the uh, snake shed, it's not a complete shed, and uh, we have to help it. And in this case, the uh, pop scale wasn't quite off, and I think I can get it. Now he's all done. A snake with two heads. Something went wrong in the egg. Such creatures are not uncommon. Only one head can feed, but this ring-necked snake will survive happily. It's very interesting, yeah. or not get, to their reptilian pets. Most people think that how can you get attached to a snake or a lizard as compared to a fluffy kitten or a cat or dog? But in a way, you really do get attached to these animals, partly because you soon realize how individual they are and how the personalities differ. By and large, you do get very attached to your animals. I'm constantly surprised by snakes. They're fascinating animals. Just everything about them is so different to us. They smell using their tongues. They move without any legs. They're cold-blooded. They have no ears. And they're just so interesting, they're so different, and so much you learn about them. Most of us might prefer to leave snakes to the experts. But love them or hate them, they're an important part of our natural world. As we shed our fears and learn more about them...